Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and today's topic of discussion is what levels you should get for bossing. This is a question that I get commonly from players who are maybe mid-level and hoping to boss soon, or they've recently tried out some bossing and it maybe hasn't been going so well. What stats should I get for bossing? The annoying answer would be just to max out your combat, though it is also kind of the truth since no matter the boss, the higher stats you have, obviously the better it is going to be for you. There's really no boss in the game that you need max combat for, in fact, you'd be pretty surprised how low your stats could be while still successfully getting a kill. My blanket answer for what stats you want for bossing would be 85 in your attack, strength, defense, range, and magic, and then 70 in your prayer. I personally would not spend a lot of time grinding out a boss with less than 90 in whichever combat style that I was using though, since it does make a pretty solid difference, and 85 to 90 isn't nearly as long of a grind as any of the levels in the 90s. If that's really the only answer you wanted, just a little blanket answer for this question, then you could leave now, I guess, but we can discuss this topic further from here. If you're trying to grind out a boss for a lot of kills, you don't want to barely be able to kill it. That will take a pretty long time each kill and it's going to be very annoying. Having low stats will pile on a couple of reasons that you'll be making less money than you could be. Obviously lower stats means lower damage per second or DPS, which in turn means slower kills. If you take a player getting 10 DPS and a player doing 5 DPS, it looks like the player with 10 would be getting twice as many kills obviously. but. There's more factors involved than just having that lower DPS. Right away we're assuming about half speed kills, which means the boss is going to get to attack you twice as many times during the fight, so obviously you're going to take a little bit more damage on each kill on average. Keep in mind, if it's your stats causing you to get the lower DPS in the first place, your defense is probably a bit lower too, which means this boss is not only getting twice as many attacks, but those attacks are more likely to hit. At this point, you're clearly taking more damage per kill than the player who's doing more damage than you, which means you're going to have to eat more in each kill. For those who don't know, eating food does give a small delay in your next attack, which slows down your attacks even more. If you've got to eat more during the fight, you're going to use less attacks, lowering your DPS even more, slowing down the kills, which again means more hits for the boss, and it's a little bit of a cycle. Plus, if you're eating more food and sipping more prayer potions, it's going to cost you more money per kill, so clearly you're making less money too. This does add up a pretty good amount, so the person with 5 DPS maybe ends up like 35-40% to 40 the speed of somebody with 10 DPS, and they're spending more money per kill. If you're only killing like 10 or 20 of a specific boss, this really isn't a huge deal, but if you're looking to make a lot of money and do a few hundred or even a few thousand kills on a high level boss, these slower kills and extra costs could add up a bit. Again, it's not something that's a requirement to be able to do faster kills and make the most money out of a boss. You can definitely kill a boss at half speed and still make pretty solid cash depending on what you're fighting. But overall, if you find it annoying that you're getting really slow kills and it's making a lot less money, then the first place you should look is definitely your stats. Obviously, each boss is a different scenario, and it's important to do your research if you're looking to get good at a specific boss fight. If you choose a boss that only requires range to kill, then obviously your attack and your strength stats really won't matter that much. You don't have to get 90 strength if you're never using strength. Some bosses you only have to use prayer for, so slower kills won't really be slowed down from eating, those slower kills still require more prayer potions which aren't free by any means, but your defense level may not be quite as important in that case. Weaker bosses obviously don't require high levels to kill, though the same concept still get to apply when it comes to faster kills. Overall, you want to make sure you have some good information about the boss before you go in there. Not that you can't go in blind, but each boss is different, so there's really not just one setup that you need in terms of stats or gear that fits just the entire umbrella of bossing. Each combat skill has its own perks, some of them being pretty obvious, like having a higher attack level will unlock you more weapons, plus you're going to be more accurate, so that plus a higher strength level is going to make your melee kills a lot faster. This goes with range and magic too, of course, having higher range level, you're going to get better gear and do more damage, having higher magic level, better gear, more damage. The defensive stats can be a little underrated at times. Clearly with a higher defense level you can wear some better gear, and a lot of gear does have offensive boosts too, so in an almost ironic way, Having higher defense can make your DPS higher. Once you unlock all the gear though, there are some other benefits. Higher defense does not lower the max hit of whatever is attacking you, but it does make your opponent less likely to land a hit. Higher defense really isn't as noticeable as higher strength. Obviously, as you get your strength level up, you're going to notice yourself hitting higher. When your defense level goes up, eventually you may notice you don't take as much damage as you used to, but it's not quite as obvious per kill. Defense isn't really your first priority in general, but it can help extended trips, which means less banking and more kills per hour. So in the long run, it is worth it to get your defense level up for sure. Your magic level can also be very important for your defensive stat. 
Like I said before, you can get better gear and do more damage if you have higher magic level, but when you're taking an attack from an opponent, if they're using a magic attack that is, your magic level decides on 70% of the defense, and then your defense level is the other 30%. So, actually your magic level is more important than defense if you're fighting something that's using magic against you. This can be really important in a lot of bossing situations. Take God Wars Dungeon, for instance. Each boss has a minion that'll be using magic the whole time. For a lot of those bosses, you'll be protecting from magic, but in situations where you can't, having that higher magic level will actually mean you take less damage, which in the long run does help out for sure. So even if you're not using magic, having a high magic level could be important. It's definitely underrated in a way. Obviously with more health, you can take more damage, which I don't think I really have to explain any more than that, though you do need high hit point levels for Zenite Jewelry, so there are some unlocks, but overall the benefits of having high health is very straightforward. Obviously training your stats takes time, which generally the reason players will try to boss before they're ready is because maybe they don't have the time or they've become a little impatient since it does require a lot of hours overall to get a high combat level. I always suggest training your stats through Slayer when you can, but Slayer is also time consuming and does require most of your attention. You can kind of multitask it, but in general I wouldn't consider it AFK. I do suggest everyone take advantage of these away from keyboard training methods. By AFK, I don't necessarily mean walking away in every case, just being able to multitask can be a big deal for some extra hours. More often than not, AFK methods are not going to be as efficient for one reason or the other, but also it's more accessible than something that's really click intensive. If you don't have the time to grind out Slayer tasks since you're a little busy doing something else, you might be able to grab some AFK gains so that you're still making a little bit of progress. My goal in this section is not to make an AFK training guide guide out of this video, but if you are looking for more information about training your stats, I have left a link to some of my skill guides in the description. Even for low levels, there are some options for AFK training. Crabs, for instance, like Rock Crabs, Sand Crabs, and Ammonite Crabs, they're all pretty AFK to fight since they're aggressive and they have a lot of health, making them good XP overall. These are mostly used for attack, strength, and defense, but range can also be trained here pretty well, especially with something like Throwing Knives or Darts. At higher levels, you can start using the Nightmare Zone for very AFK melee gains, and as you approach 99 in attack and strength, you can start getting some of the best melee XP rates in the game. Again, range can be trained here too, but it's not as common, though a blowpipe with some solid range gear can add up to your levels pretty quickly. If you're looking for more information on the Nightmare Zone, that is another guide that I have linked in the description. Other options for higher level range training include throwing chinchampas, which is some of the fastest XP in the game. It doesn't really require much attention, though it can be very expensive. Using a cannon in multi-combat areas like Dagonoth under the lighthouse, for instance, can also add up XP pretty quickly, while again requiring pretty low attention. An hour or so of range training while you watch Netflix late at night definitely adds up faster than you expect, and range is really like the most OP of the three combat methods in the game. Having a high range level can be very important. Even magic training does have some AFK options. For example, you could enchant jewelry or make house teleport tabs at lower levels. There's a few spells in the Lunar Spellbook that can autocast, such as String Amulet and Plank Make, though Plank Make, similar to enchanting jewelry, you don't really want to AFK them if you have the time to be real click intensive, but you do have the option for some AFK gains in there. Similar to throwing chins for range XP, you can burst or even use barrage spells to attack a bunch of opponents at once, making magic a pretty fast skill in general, though again, not very cheap unless maybe you're using slower methods. With that in mind, it doesn't take that many extra AFK hours to make a pretty big difference on your magic level, so it is worth grinding out a little bit. Even prayer has some bonus benefits that not everyone really thinks about. Clearly higher prayer is going to unlock better prayers to use, but with a higher prayer level, you will regain more prayer points from each sip of a prayer potion or a super restore. This slowly saves you a little bit of money though, it does take a while for that to actually make up for the cost of prayer training, but it also means that each potion is worth more prayer points per inventory slot. This can lead to more kills per trip and in the long run more kills per hour. Also if you're using a bossing method that between each kill you want it to teleport to your player own home like Corp for instance, and you kept sipping from your pool and healing prayer points, you could basically go for no prayer potions if you had a high enough prayer level. Prayer can also be very expensive to train, especially if you go for the AFK methods, like using bones on an altar, but there are some cheap options if you decided not to go for AFK, and you don't really need to go for like 90 plus in prayer. If you just unlocked each prayer and you're in the 70s, maybe sit right at 80 would still be really solid. It's definitely a good prayer level overall, but if you've got 99 and everything else and you're wondering what you should invest in, 99 prayer is not a bad investment at all. So the main points that I'm going for in this discussion, I guess, are as your stats get higher, your kills are going to become easier, faster, and more efficient. 
Each skill has its own perks, so depending on each boss, obviously, you might find that getting multiple skills higher is going to make a big difference in the fight. And then AFK training can save the world. That's actually a video of mine that you might like if you enjoyed the AFK training part of this discussion. An extra hour of gains when you can squeeze in the AFK life really can make a big difference in the long run for your bossing trips. I think that is everything that I wanted to talk about when it comes to bossing stats, everybody. Continue the discussion below in the comments section. So far, it is a bit one-sided since the video is just me rambling on about it, so I would like to hear your thoughts on what levels you think you should get for bossing. If you did enjoy the video or you just got some useful information from it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which the link should be on the screen and in the description. I also have a Twitter and a Discord, which again, the links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your bossing grinds.